Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our self care for mental health or mental well being and chronic conditions. And we've got some great speakers, and um, we look forward to your your um, messages in the chat room on Facebook Live. And we've got uh, uh, Sophia Morgan Genus, Joan Bailey, Vasco Stevenson, Derek Clement. So he, Derek will be talking about hair health and how that, that affects the our mental well-being and also how it relates to chronic conditions. So we shall get starting with Sophia Morgan Genius, genius even, genius. She is a genius. She can talk about everything. And so Sophia, Hi. let's start off with what we mean by self-care, generally yeah. speaking, first of all. I think that um, self-care is, is very important. You can't help others until you can take care of yourself. So it's important that we understand what's important for us. I always believe in that holistic approach. So you're looking at the physical element, which could be your diet, it could be your physical activity, it could be your physical surroundings, your environment. So what you're putting on your hair, what you're putting on your skin, these are all the physical elements that can control your stress levels, that control your well-being. We can look onto the intellectual thing. So what you're watching on television, the books that you're reading, the company that you're keeping, the discussions that you're having, how stimulating is that for you? So that's important to understand on that for your part of your well-being. We move on to the emotional things. So the, the people that you care for in your lives, how you're being supported, what support you're giving, what support you're receiving. So that's really, really important because if you're hanging around people that are emotionally drained, in, then that can have an effect on you as well. So you've got to be very important about our emotional well-being, our emotional settings, giving and receiving. We've got our social settings, your friends, they say you are the company that you keep. So it's important to look at the friends that you're keeping. If they're very negative, then you are can be very negative. You can, you can feel that energy, you can feel that spirit. So we've got to be conscious about our social gatherings and, and, our, and the people that we, we hang around. And also our spiritual element of it, our connection with a higher force of how we perceive that kind of connection, whether we feel in balance and whether we feel energized. So for me, when we talk about well-being, being it is that big picture and all those elements are important that we pay a little bit of mindfulness on all those different elements and that helps to keep us feeling good and being well and if something's out of sync then it can have an effect on loads of things so for example if physically you're not taking care of yourself that can take an effect on your emotional health on your intellectual health and your smoke your social and emotional you can do the whole range just by one side being out of sync so we need to look at all areas when we talk about well-being because all are really, really important great and that's a, a great overview from from sophia there to, to, to set us set the agenda for us for the rest of the evening. Good evening, Brother Derek. Brother Rudy, thank you very much indeed. Sorry for being late, but there you are. And these things happen. <laughs> <laughs> we, understand. we understand. We understand. <laughs> so Derek will be talking about hair health in, in, in a while. But I'd like to really start off with Joan Bailey and her particular initiative, which I was really impressed with. So, so Joan, can you just give us, tell us a little bit about yourself, give us the background to why you started the initiative, and then just tell us the impact it has had on the participants. Thank you. Right, so I am Joan Bailey, and I have a day job. Um, I'm a fitness guru. So back in March, like everybody else, living, you know, normal life, doing your thing, going to work, going to the gym, partying, you know, doing all the stuff that we do. Yeah. And then lockdown was suddenly coming upon us. And none of us have been in anything like this. It was all so surreal. And I thought, you know, when the school started to shut and this was shutting, that was shutting. And then when the gym shut, that was the real kind of like nail and everything for me because, oh my God, how was I going to keep myself fit and active and healthy? So working, I was doing the mad shopping like everybody else and, and doing the walking, because that's all I could do as the gym was shut. 
And then I thought to myself, oh gosh, this really isn't any good. I've got a smart TV. I download, downloaded the apps on the TV. I was in my good living room doing um, Les Mills, boxing and all sorts. And I thought, not in my good living room. <laughs> and I was, and it's lonely as well when you're training on your, on your own like that. So I said to myself, mm, let me try this walking because that's, that's all that was really available to us. So I used to walk in the evenings and my kids were saying to me, mom, it's a bit dark for you to be walking up and down like that. You won, you know, because obviously in March it's still winter time. Mm -hmm. So then one morning I said, right, let me just switch this thing up. And I went walking in, in the morning, early morning. So I left the house at about, about, quarter, about 5.30, quarter to six. And it was nice. It was bright. It was peaceful. It was quiet. And there wasn't many people around, but, and I could safely walk. So I did that for a few weeks. And then one of my primary school friends contacted me and said, Joan, I've got blood pressure. Um, I need to get healthy. I need to start, you know, get my activity levels up. So I said, well, all right, you can come with me. All I'm doing is walking. So she came with me for a couple of months to put a program in place for us. So we talked. And sometimes it's just about talking, yeah. you know. Sometimes when you try and tell people to do things, it doesn't work. Mm. So just by talking to her and saying, well, come on, let's try, you know, drinking more water. You know, when you go to the petrol station, don't buy those chocolate covered peanuts. Yes, resist. Yes, just come out of that habit. And it's about breaking bad habits. Break the habit, you know, let's do green days. Let's have set days to walk. So we'd walk Monday, Wednesday and Friday, because obviously we're all still trying to work as well, even though we're working from home. Um, you know, look at his talk about sleep, rest, etc. you know, trying to get her into a routine. So that works. But bearing in mind, as we're walking, I was seeing, you know, loads of loads of groups. So I see like one woman walking on her own each time we're walking and she's just on her own, like she's walking aimlessly. And you can see she's out of the house because probably she's just bored. And then you see like groups of two and three walking and after a while that would dissipate. So you'd have this woman walking on her own who would stop walking because she's bored, she's lonely, she's fed up, and she just can't be bothered, yeah? Then you'd have the group where there's two and three of them, they'd be walking and one would drop off and, you know, she's not walking, everybody else is not walking. So as I'm walking, I just kept feeling in my spirit and I'm quite a spiritual person as well. And I just kept thinking, you need to start a walking group. And I thought, start a walking group? You need to start a walking group. And I said, all right then. And then bearing, I'm talking to some of my friends. Now me, I love working from home. I want working from home to last forever <laughs> because I just love it. Yes, I could be in my house, do me little cooking, do me gardening, do me cleaning, do me washing. So I love it. But I get it now where people say working from home is not for them. Mm. Just by talking to some of my friends, they've had a really hard time. You know, I've got a friend now, a few months ago, she was saying to me, I was working from home and Joan, I could feel the walls were coming in on me. And I thought, oh gosh, that sounded, it sounded really, it kind of took me. I'm thinking, my God, what's going on here? And then another friend of mine, she was saying to me, Joan, do you know what? I wake up at 10 o'clock and I just feel like I'm going into a dark place. And I thought, oh my God, what is this? What is this? What is this? What's going on? Going to a, what's, what's that about? Going to a dark place. And more and more, you know, they were telling me how they were feeling. So I said, right, all that I am doing right now is walking. So who wants to come? So when I flung it out to my friends on the WhatsApp now, 35 of them contacted me. And out of the 35, 27 came. So to cut a long story short, I don't know how long I've got. Yeah, yeah. So to, cut, to cut a long story short now, so out of the 20, 27 now, so we did it for six weeks. And all my friends who are trainers and do fitness and line dancing, etc. So I said, right, Mary, you come, you can do the keep fit thing with us one week. Josie, you come the next week and you can do the line dancing with us. So what we do, one week line dancing, one week um, fitness. So we walked to a park somewhere in the borough of Lucian and people have probably seen us doing our thing in the park. So we did that for six weeks. By the end of the six weeks, we had 65 ladies. And I tell you, it was frightening because we're in a pandemic. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 
So you can imagine trying to navigate the group <laughs> to the park, you yeah. know, and them not thinking that it's some kind of march. <laughs> yeah, all these beautiful black women who are just walking, but do you know what I mean? There's power in numbers, isn't it? Yeah. So um, we did that, and then when I said, right, that's it, no, we don't know. Yes, everybody can go back and do it. Oh, no, Joe, we wanted to continue. Don't stop, don't stop. I said, you realise we're in a pandemic, innit? You realise, oh, no, we all want to walk. We don't want it to stop. What are we going to do on a Saturday now? So it's almost like you're taking some kind of responsibility now for people. Of course. Then we said, all right, then. We're going to do it for another six weeks. So we did it for another six weeks. And then... Oh gosh, they just don't want it to end. But what I did with that particular model, so we'd walk to a park still in Lewisham, then we would exercise or line dance. Mm -hmm. And then I've got lots of friends. So I've got a friend who's a coach, one is a nutritionist, one is a public speaker, one who does essential oils. Oh gosh, so much of them. So what I do, I get one of my friends to come and talk to them about some, something to do with health. Yeah. Whether it's nutrition, you know, public speaking, anything that's going to kind of like empower the women. Yeah. So we did that for six weeks. Mm -hmm. That time, me tired and ready for start walking, because you can imagine every Saturday, my two look of foot, chuk, 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 have them all over the borough walking up and down. So then we got to Black History Month, October. Mm -hmm. I said, right, we'll, do it for, we'll have to see how we go then, because the lockdown is coming down harder on us. Yeah. So I said, all right then. So, and each, and what I do with each kind of like program, so the first program, they had to get their 10,000 steps in. Okay. The second program was 15,000. Right now they're on 20,000, yeah? So there was a target and we, I make it fun, yeah? So a lot of the time when they're walking, I'm saying to them, come on, less talking, more walking, yes? Right. But it's almost, it's like a community now. It gives them something to look forward to. They come out and they walk. Excellent. Yeah? Excellent. Thank you very much for that. And we're, we're going to come back to that. And, yes. and it touches on a lot of the points that Sophia mm. mentioned as well. And we are the Queen's Walking Group, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> and you can put the details in the chat room so we can share, share it. I will do. I will do. So, um, Derek, also yeah. an important element of self care relates to chronic conditions and of course the, the work that you're doing around hair, hair, hair health. So if, if you could um, spend a bit of time on that because we know chronic conditions, lupus, sickle cell, you know, taking medication, all of these things that have an impact as it relates to self-care, cultural esteem and the, you know, the way all of us feel about ourselves. So I wondered if you could just give an overview on, on what you've been doing as it, what you do as it relates to that when you're advising women around their maintenance, maintenance advice. Yeah, good evening guys. I would love to start, and of course it says uh, mental health, mental health, and um, self-care, I think those are very important words. Uh, I think self-care resonates with me much more in that I think it's, the onus is on us to ensure that we look after ourselves. Um, in our culture, there are wonderful epithets such as uh, prevention is better than the cure. But if you've, um, if you've gone to the, the, the if, if you've reached the stage where you, your, your body is demanding um, the right nutrients, then obviously, um, so it's important therefore to ensure that you, you boost your, your, uh, your autoimmunity to ensure that uh, you become um, safeguarded from the ills and the, the, the pathogens and the, and the toxins out there. It's actually very crucial because that, to me, in my opinion, also uh, hinges on the fact that if you are well and your well-being is at the right state, then I think so would your hair. So in my opinion, uh, good health is equal to healthy hair. And it must be understood that um, hair depends on a good health. 
your hair grows from within and not from without. So if your hair is breaking, therefore, and it's damaged or challenged, uh, nothing you do on the outside will make a difference. It will perhaps um, coat your hair shaft and give one the illusion that the hair is healthy. And I think that's what our people tend to do. They tend to look for ideas outside. It's like everything else. People look for heaven outside. They look for heaven in the sky. It's all within. And so your hair is, your hair really depends, the, the health of your hair depends entirely on your well-being. And so it's incumbent upon you, therefore, that you uh, uh, ensure that you, that, that you self-care. Okay, and, and uh, the Cher Moist philosophy is all about um, plant-based and intelligent nutrient and, uh, and, and sticking to uh, the products or the ingredients that's indigenous to us. And I can't stress more that you can't use things that your ancestors never used. If your ancestors spent the last 3,000 years using one particular uh, uh, item, then that becomes part of your DNA. And so your DNA understands that. Hence the reason why we focus is on the ingredients that are grown in our own habitat, i.e. Jamaica, Grenada, Ghana, Africa, wherever it may come from, wherever we come from, that these are the things that we focus on. Intelligent nutrient, plant-based, okay. organic substances preferably. Keep away from the stuff that's going to harm your hair. And it doesn't just harm your hair shaft, but it will ultimately harm your, your hair, your, your scalp, your head. Um, like certain uh, the experts uh, in particular talked about I think there's a, a, a doctor Dr. Joy um, can't, can't remember her last name but she talked about uh, post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome and I talked about that in my book um, post-traumatic stress syndrome and uh, the problem for that is we can inherit stress or stresses from our ancestors assuming the ancestors may have tra been traumatized and um, for instance, it, 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 we do know that hair breakage and good health can be, um, it can be intergenerational. And I, I, I did, I, I, I've noticed that in certain of my clients, there are folks here who are consistently, grandmother's hair is this condition, mother's hair is this condition, the daughter's hair is in this condition, and the grandchild is in this condition. So that's intergenerational. And there are folks that I know that have been doing for many years whose grandmother's hair is this condition, daughter's, mother's hair is in this condition, so you have this intergenerational problem. And so if we therefore adopt the concept of self-care, we could break the chain. It's not very difficult. We talked about that in the Bible. Who says if the children eat sour grapes? No, who says if the father eats sour grapes, the children's teeth will be on edge? It means that you could stop the uh, the, you know, break the chain, so to speak, what they call uh, uh, the curse. And the curse simply means uh, if you are, and all, all this is relevant to hair now. Uh, my, my contribution is about hair and this well-being. And the reason why it's important that we have hair that is good, and I'm using the word good in brackets, because it empowers us. It makes us feel good about ourselves. It just stands to reason. So good hair or healthy hair is intrinsically attached to how it's part of how we feel. If our hair feels good, and that doesn't, and good doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't mean good as being a, a, a type. It means that your hair is at its best, is at its optimum, is it's at its zenith. So you must endeavor to ensure that you uh, break the curse and focus on the well, your well-being, your, your self-care, right? Our ancestors talked about food is medicine and medicine is food. And if that is the case, then good food will ultimately give us good hair or healthy hair. And I'm using the word good hair in, uh, in brackets because I, I don't think there's such a thing as good or bad hair. But your hair can be bad or in a bad condition if it's not being dealt with properly. In other words, be, uh, as really just uh, uh, alluded to, uh, if it's not getting expert advice and it's not getting the information and guard and support and guidance from the professionals, right? So, so your professional hairdresser, if he or she is professional, must endeavor to ensure that every, every client, 
And as we keep saying in, in, in our brand, no hair must be left behind. Mm -hmm. Every single strand of hair on your head should be, should be in a state of health and well-being because it makes us feel good. We are told in our culture that our hair grows up into the sky. So if that is the case, it has to, 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 to reach to the sky in this upward motion it must be in a healthy state. And thank God we have the natural hair movement uh, mm -hmm. now because that means we are starting all over again. We are very blessed, you know, brother Roots and sisters, is that God has given us an opportunity to start all over again so we can claim back our hair and move forward with healthy, good hair and good meaning that hair that's not challenged, that's not broken, that's not exposed to the parabens and the silicones and the and the sulfates. These are, in my opinion, they're not just carcinogenic, but they do harm to the hair and the well-being of your hair. So it's quite it's quite straightforward. Mm -hmm. Good health is equal to healthy hair. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Sophia talked about holistic. Yeah, there's also the, the medication. There's the medication and chronic conditions as it relates to. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, thanks, no, so thanks for reminding me, brother, Ruth, indirectly, because if we are challenged, in other words, if we are autoimmunity for some peculiar reason, uh, autoimmunity uh, would trigger, is a trigger for inflammation. Inflammation, we now know, can exacerbate the problem, your, your health, and as a result, things like uh, the chronic conditions such as lupus, a uh, 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 condition like even sickle cell, uh, we, we, we now uh, thyroid, uh, alopecia, all those are consequence of bad health. And as a result, your hair being the barometer will ultimately be bad or in a bad state or in a bad condition. Yeah, well, that, that kind of brings us, before we go back to Sophia, CC, CCCA, Derek, if you could just, just talk about that, take us through that. Right. So one of the chronic conditions, as we as just talked about, is alopecia areata, and there are multiple alopecias, alopecia universalis, alopecia totalis, alopecia areata, and we now have this other one that's called, what they used to call pressing comb alopecia, and the reason why it's called the pressing comb alopecia, because for many, many decades, we used to press the hair, and the constant pressing and hitting the scalp with this pressing comb would leave somewhat very fragile part of it, the top of the crown would go over time. But that is also caused by uh, 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 people who suffer from high blood pressure. High blood pressure, unfortunately, if you are on high blood pressure, ladies, you will have to take medication. And the medication is a, is a calcium blocker. It blocks the calcium from going into the hair, shaft the hair cells to thus give us long hair. So that's CCCA. I think it's, 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 it's a centrifugal, which means it's in the center. Uh, centrifugal, uh, anyway, centri CCC alopecia, and that alopecia is very much common. It's almost pandemic in our community, and that's because, to a large extent, is the medication that's actually causing that problem. And invariably, the tight pulling, the, 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 the traction, and, and, and obviously the pressing combs. And it's so sad that in our community that people, I think Sophia talked about this before, love your hair, whatever hair type you've got, love your hair. You can't change your hair type overnight. It can't be done. It's tied to your DNA. So why fight, why fight with it? So we see sisters fighting, pulling, tugging, stressing, trying to manipulate the hair. We did this for almost three, four, five decades. It, it never worked, nothing happened. I learned to the hair, I'm like Solomon. In fact, no, I'm, not, I'm like Saul now talking to the Christians, right? I, I spent so many years damaging people's hair, but guess what? I've learned. I've realized after 30, 40 years of hairdressing, all that relaxing, all that blow drying, pressing and curling, is it, it really amounts to naught. People tell me, oh, I'm trying to grow my hair. 20 years later, I'm trying to grow my hair. 30 years later, I'm trying to grow my hair. But now we leave it alone because now we've claimed our trust. So uh, for the sisters who are uh, not looking after themselves with regards to uh, uh, poor health, you will suffer um, alopecia, especially alopecia areata. And as Rudy alluded to just now, and Sophia talked about the CCCA, which is really common at the moment, it's pandemic. Okay, thanks for that, Derek. So, Sophia, if we can just, very interested in your magnesium, etc. So, if you could just 
give us an overview of that in particular as well and the benefits of that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I have a passion for magnesium and it's a natural mineral and a vital mineral. And um, that's why it's so important for our lifestyle. 80 to 90% of us are depleted in magnesium. Now it's a mineral that your body releases when you're under any kind of stress. So if you're under physical stress because you're eating meat, fish and dairy, if you're under emotional stress because you're concerned about your health, if you're taking pharmaceutical medication, then your body's under stress. If your body's acid, it's releasing this uh, magnesium because it's trying to alkaline your body, it's trying to rejuvenate your body, it's trying to relax your body. So the best way of thinking of it is, that, is it as the mineral of relaxation, the mineral of rejuvenation. So if 80 to 90% of us are depleted in this mineral, it's about how do we get it back into our bodies? And the best way is via your skin. Because it's a natural relaxant, you're limited how much magnesium you can absorb or because it will relax your cells and that's just not cute. So it's best to take it up via your skin, either soaking in the bath, a lotion, oil, we do body butters, we do a range. Um, you would normally in nature get magnesium from your leafy greens. You would get it from your fruit, your vegetables, your watermelon, your, your beans. This is where you would get your magnesium from. We've changed in that our diets have changed. And we think that we're eating food, but in fact, we're eating food like substances. What is like vibe? And so we can survive on that, but we can't thrive. So if you imagine, then we think, yes, did we eat today? And just think about what you ate for breakfast, what you ate for lunch, what you ate for supper. Now take away the heat from that. In other words, just tell me what you had that wasn't cooked. Human beings are the only creatures that cook their food. So let's take away the things that wasn't cooked. And you would see that you didn't eat as much as you thought. So you ate a small amount of real food that you could eat in its raw state. And the rest of it was food-like substances because you processed it. Now, once you've processed that food, it's changed in your digestion and you start producing the white blood cells. Your body feels like it's under attack. So Derek was talking about the aspects of how it affects your hair. And this is what's going on. Your body is designed to survive, and so it's going to make sacrifices. And an easy sacrifice to make is going to be your skin and your hair, because they're not important to your body. Your internal organs are very important, but your hair and your skin is less important. And so your body is going to turn around and say, we need to alkalize, we need to focus, we need to deal with these acid-forming foods, your meat, fish, and dairy. So we need to deal with that. And so we're going to not going to spend any time focusing on your hair and your skin. That's not important. So you're going to see your hair is going to go gray quicker. Your skin's going to be dry. You're going to find wrinkles. These are signs that your body is acid. So it's about trying to alkaline. Now, the way to get back and get back into balance is to go closer to nature. So Derek's right. You look at the products that you use in your hair. Are they organic? Are they natural? Can you eat those products? This is stuff that your body recognizes. So your body recognizes an, a mango, a coconut. It understands that because you can have that in its raw state. Once you start cooking and processing, your body is going to be at challenge. So you look at what you're putting on your skin. What chemicals are on that? Because whatever touches the outside of your skin or your scalp is going into your body. And which means that your body is going to have to fight that. And so that's going to turn your body acid. And when you've got an acid body, that's where disease and illness lies. So it's about trying to get your wellness back. It's about moving close to nature. Are you going outside? Are you walking? Are you moving your body? Your body is designed to move. And if you're sitting in front of a computer, sitting in front of a, the TV all day, then your body's going to give you signs. You're going to have backache. You're going to have muscle ache. You're going to be um, fatigued inside your muscles because it's designed to eliminate the stress by movement. So the walking group is excellent because what you're doing is that when you put that tension in your body, you're releasing that tension in a way that you're enjoying having that company is enjoyable as well. So it's about looking at, are you being mindful? Are you relaxing? Are you soaking in the bath? Are you taking that time for yourself? All these factors are so important to our physical well-being and our mental well-being as well, because they are all connected, you know? So it's really, really important. But yes, that's why I love magnesium. It rebalances, rejuvenates and alkalines. Wonderful. Okay. Great, great. So were you going to say something there, Derek? No, I, I absolutely agree with Sophia. And she talked about the toxicity. Uh, the body really does thrive better when it's, when it's alkaline. And so does the hair as a consequence. And I think, you know, she touched on another great thing about feeling 
giving your body the right type of food to ultimately ensure that your hair will thrive and grow healthily. Okay, right. We're going to ch slight change in direction because, um, but you'll see the connection. So Talk Warsy is online with us from NHS. Ooh, she asked a question. Yeah, she's asked a question. Right, but okay, so she can, she can, she can still speak as well, because um, Tawazi works for NHS Blood and Transport to transplant NHS BT, as we say, and has done and does a lot of work around blood donation, and we'll talk about the importance that our community should donate blood, particularly for our sicklers and for other conditions as well. So talk, Wolsey, um, if you can, what, what was your question? And then you can tell us a bit more about your work around blood donation around all around the country or for the community. Um, good evening, everyone. Yes. All right, Wolsey. Um, my question was Sophia, because she was talking about mental health. I was just saying, um, it's just because today um, there was a call out on Facebook for us to, especially like in the Bristol area, to help our young black men who have been caught up in the mental health system. Cause you know, once they go through the door of those institutions, they're injected with all manner of things and a majority of them, there's no coming back. It's once they get a hold of them, you know, but once they're in there, once they come out though, how can we support them? Yeah. There is a project run by um, Beresford Dawkins in, in Birmingham, and it was unfortunate he couldn't be on here tonight, otherwise he would have been talking about the work he's doing, which is path-breaking. So we'll have to do that another occasion. But just to say that, again, we, we do have people within the system who are working hard, and our community need to know more about it. We need to raise awareness Otherwise, we, we think there's no hope. And there is hope because we do have some good people, but we just need to keep trying to get the message out. So, so um, I understand what you're saying there. Yeah. Well, can I just say that um, you're, we're Zooming on Saturday, um, the Queen's Walking Group. Absolutely. As you know, we've, we've gone from uh, walking to Zooming, so to speak, and I've got a lot of friends who work in the mental health field. So we felt it was really important to bring that to the platform and have that discussion. But most importantly, to so that people know there's, there is help out there. So that person that you um, just spoke about, if they could come on the platform on Saturday, just even for five minutes, just to talk about what they're doing and just to signpost but they need to come early because you know our platform gets full up really quick. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll speak with him. And yeah. the important thing as well, and I've done a lot of work from an um, organisational perspective, and there's a, a need for a shift in our own mindset in ourselves, because if you look at, and I've talked about African Caribbean culture, if you look at how we treat our own, our own when it comes to learning disabilities, mental health, let's just say that there's much more love, compassion and humanity that we ourselves could, could do. And, and I think this pandemic again has uncovered a lot of the mental health issues that we're gonna to have to address over the next two years, some serious ones at all demographic levels so we've got elders in isolation we've got people in their middle in their middle ages so to speak 40 to plus lost their jobs had thought they had good secure jobs family breakups and what have you you've got young people who haven't been able to go to school haven't been able to uh, access the learning and have all meet all their friends the importance of you know what school is and social and social learning so we've got tremendous um, challenges to come along the way. But we do have people who are thinking about, it. I don't, I don't, I, I don't want people to think that we 
don't have anybody thinking about it within our community and trying to work out the best way for ourselves. But it, it, it is a challenge, without okay. a doubt. Can I just commend you in the, for in the short time. term? You know, you've got fantastic speakers on. I just wish more people had, you know, tuned in. It, do, it, it doesn't matter because we've got 90 odd people views. I, I, I never worry about who's not in the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Those of us who are here. Yes, Again, yes, our, our, our community is the way it is. Yeah. That's the reality. We all know what Caribbean culture is like. And we don't listen until it hurts us. And then we say, please, God, help me. Mm. That, that's just the reality. Yeah. right and as I say we do have people who volunteer we touched on it at a previous meeting mm. and it's only a small amount of us who will volunteer yeah but when the time comes a lot of us want help and demand help from the community mm. and that that's the culture but yeah. but uh, I, I don't want to go down that road tonight no, 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 that's for another conversation so um, just, talk, just to... talk Wolsey I'd like you yeah. to really just talk about the because we've only got another 10 minutes or so okay, it's yeah, important please. that we get this message across why our community should donate blood we do yeah. donate blood that's the other thing i don't want anybody to again listen that says that we don't donate blood or and we we don't try and get our own community to donate blood it's not it's not true we do there's lots of great initiatives bev bogle's online here but again, we're not going to go down that road, but just get the facts for, for this particular uh, platform, why we should donate blood in our well, own interest. Well, we have got a bit of good news because in the last um, few months, 10% um, more black people have donated blood. So Great. Good, that, and that's the efforts of a lot of um, people, especially young people up in London, mainly that area, mm -hmm. that have sickle cell. And yeah. they are going out and campaigning and encouraging you know, people from the community mm -hmm. to donate blood because they're the ones who need it. Many of them are having to have um, blood exchanges five, three, four times a month. Uh, and Can you speak up a bit, talk, Ozzy? Can you speak up a bit? You're a bit low. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the blood that they have, the exchange, needs to come from somewhere. And it's much more beneficial to them if it comes from their own ethnic background. Mm. And this is us as a community. So we need to, if you're fit and healthy from the age of 17, step up to the plate and you know give a donation of blood because you are literally saving three people's lives and it's not just um blood donation there's the organ donation and there's stem cell as well because all of those things are lacking in us as a community giving and all of those things are life-saving things and if we don't help ourselves who's going to help us our dna needs to match so when they have their transfusion, it, the blood has to match. And it can only come from us. And predominantly sickle cell affects us as a community. You know, and it's an easy half an hour time out of your time for women is four, three times a, month, a year. For a man is four times a year, they give this pint of blood and the amount of things it can do. So we need to talk about it, educate, because we need the younger ones coming up and doing it. So we need to educate from young, talk to them, and them understand the need. I've noticed that generation coming up now, how much they're using social media, the little videos and things recently as well. Yeah, so yeah, that's the way of getting the word out is, the, Instagram, Facebook, you know, WhatsApp groups, you know, just talking. Yeah, yeah. You just have to plant the seed and make them think. Okay, Th thanks for that talk, Wazi. So, Sophia, is there anything that you wanted to yeah, say on that? Me. And then I'll come to you, Bev. I see you got your hand up. Yeah. Then come back to you, Joan. 
Okay, it was just um, on the point of of mental health because that's my that's my background. I'm yeah. I'm a mental health social worker. That's what I've been in for over twenty years. I've been, prior to that I was in psychiatric nursing. That's my background, and I teach at Birmingham University. But at um, on my YouTube, um, if you find Morgan Genus on YouTube, what I have gotten there is some videos regarding stress and well-being. Um, I also have on there what's called a wellness plan where you can go through and actually you take control of your of your health. And on there is a free ebook connected with that. So you can go through that where you're looking at what does it take for me to be well? What should I do? What should I avoid? Who should I tell? And so it's about taking that control back. And I also have a, a private link um, if people want to know a bit more about specifically back mental health, because that's what I teach on the mental health um, course at Birmingham and Derby University. I, I do I just teach specifically black mental health on those two courses. So um, if she wants to contact me afterwards or and find me, find Morgan Genius. I can't hide. Um, you, you can get hold of me that way and I can send you that private link as well. Great, thanks for that. Okay. Bev? You're welcome. Unmute. Apologize for my late log on. I was having some problem trying to use the iPhone on that. I just the young um young lady that spoke before that is involved with the blood um donation and all that that campaign oh, I, I forgot Vasco Stevenson sorry what is her name no, that's join the meeting Wolsey. how many people is, sorry talk Wolsey. talk Wolsey. okay um yes i just wanted to um endorse what she's saying but one quick um um i would like to know because the percentage it's important for me to know to date um what percentage of the black community has she got on record that does donate three percent it's, it's, it's yeah it, three yes in fact that the, the overall so, population is yeah. this country donate about three percent it, it, for years it was four and i think of recent times it, it dropped down to three and then they were saying within that within the um the BAME communities, as they would say, black, yeah. Asian, minority, ethnic, it was around 1%. Okay, because I just added a little research and it's showing four. Yeah. You see, so this is why I queried it with, I just wanted to know which one, which is the latest that I'll have to, which yeah. one is, this one is late 1919 that I looked at. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was but, four for a long yeah. time, then it, then. Yeah. Well, who, maybe it's back to four now. Who knows? Yeah, but that that's been four for quite a while because it went up to about six about two years ago, I believe. Rudy, you it went up a bit, then it dropped again. So yeah. are you talking yeah. about the black population giving blood order? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. Now Vasco had some challenges getting on earlier on but he's managed to get here on by phone vasco are you there <laughs> i was having problems right he, he did sound as though he, he did come onto the onto the platform but obviously let me just see i guess it would help if i let him into the room Right, this should be, this should be Vasco. Uh, yes, it is, Rudy. Right, Vasco, the floor's all yours. Yes, sir. You you've got seven minutes. Sorry, you you've got seven minutes to the end of the program. I, oh I, my goodness, is I it worth my is it worth Mike coming in with seven minutes to go? Well, it, it is really. You can give us your five minute overview on your favorite topic as it relates to self care. Meant as it relates health, as it relates to self care. Yeah, as it relates to self care. Um, yeah, F give us five okay. minutes of your wisdom. Okay. <laughs> if I have any left after today, um, self care and management. Yes, um, yes, it is something that we don't pay a lot of attention to, you know. And uh, really, when it comes to self care, uh, we have to look not only at our diets and lifestyle, we have to look at uh, whether we are stressed out, 
Uh, we have to look at whether we have toxic friends around us and toxic situations. And all of that, to my mind, combines to make what self-care really is. Um, in this day and age, of course, we have lots of challenges and we have to be very mindful of uh, everything we put in our bodies. We have to be mindful in um, even in our thoughts. And if we begin on the physical plane, we are then talking about what we eat and drink. Uh, as ethnic people, we should be eating a lot of citrus fruits um, because they get mucus out of our body and mucus, of course, um, you know, creates a lot of cancer in the body. And first thing in the morning when we get up, we should have a cup of uh, preferably green tea, which has anti-cancer properties. It has a, a compound called EGCG, which has proven anti-cancer qualities. We should add uh, some lemon juice to that and a little bit of perhaps cider apple vinegar or uh, half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. And that sets the liver up for the uh, daily cleanse because, it, as you know, the liver and the kidneys are the two most important organs when it comes to uh, detoxification and good health. And if either one of them happens to be compromised, then there's a possibility that we may start to suffer from some degenerative disease. So that sets the liver up. The bicarbonate of soda also uh, has a positive effect on the kidneys. And as you may know, the, the body makes its own bicarbonate of soda through the kidneys. And sometimes there can be a deficiency there if the kidneys are not working properly. So that sets up the day. And after breakfast within half an hour. And that breakfast should really be something filling that should keep us um, feeling full throughout the day so that we don't have to um, eat between meals or, uh, you know, snack, uh, because snacking is um, one way of putting on extra weight, which, of course, is not conducive to good health, because when you have extra weight on, you're then susceptible to, firstly, diabetes, um, which, has a, uh, which brings on high blood pressure, heart problems, kidney problems, uh, pancreatic problems, and of course, joint problems. So all of this uh, is the physical aspect of um, self-care and management. But if we look at it from an esoteric perspective now, we look at the um, non-physical aspect of uh, healthcare management, which is um, well, stress, um, how we relate to, uh, say, something like Alzheimer's, and how we... Um, you know, relate to the world around us. And we should be meditating uh, at least 15 minutes per day to de-stress ourselves because we are living very stressful lives, especially with this COVID-19 and all the uh, related issues with that. So we should be living um, lives as stressless as possible. And meditating for me is one way to de-stress. So 15 minutes a day, and that should set you up for the day. And of course, when you go out, then you're more balanced and, and equipped to handle any of the challenges for the day, except one that has to do with technical things like computers and servers when they go, <laughs> when they rub you up the wrong way. Right. So that is part of it. And of course, um, we have to drink clean water as well. One of the tips about drinking water, because our bodies are about 75% water, one of the tips is, you know, they used to say you should drink eight pints of water per day. Yeah. That is not correct. You can actually drink about a liter of water per day, uh, even in the hottest of weather. But I like to that, you should then be eating certain fruits and vegetables. For instance, Watermelon, pineapple, uh, cucumbers, uh, radishes, all of those fruits and vegetables contain what is known as, what is known as structured water or EZ water. Uh, that's what we call the juice. And that is more hydrating, according to recent science, than H2O, because that gets into the cells and hydrates them better. And of course, they also come with vitamins and minerals, which 
H2O hasn't got. So that has to do with self-care and management. And uh, if, if you can get more people looking at their bodies that way, and these are very simple things you can do. It's not rocket science. Right. Vasco, as always, words of wisdom, as I said earlier on. And um, But let me apologize for the technical glitch and, and the fact that I've been out of the program most of the evening. That's a sincere apology from me. Um, no problem. Uh, I would have hoped that I could have contributed a bit more. Yes, but you'll be back next week, next Wednesday. Next so, week, Wednesday. Yeah, we've got the prostate health with uh, Dr. Frank as well. That's it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So, all right. Thanks a lot for that. Right, we're, we're just about okay. to, to the end. So I'm just going to... Sophie, your last point. Then I, no, let me do it around the other way. I'm going to go to Joan just to let us know about Saturday's event, and then I'll ask uh, Sophia just to close the show for us. Joan. You're on mute. Right, you can hear me now. Okay. So we've gone from walking to zooming. We've had quite a few um, successful events. We've done um, Queens, Black Hair Rocks, which was really good. Saturday gone, we had Queens, It's Under the Menopause. Um, and this week we've got, let's talk about mental health. So we've got a fantastic panel, which Rudy, you're part of. We've got a GP coming on. We've got an occupational therapist. We've got a mental health, mental health nurse coming on. And we've got somebody else coming on what she does. But we've got a fantastic um, set of panelists coming on. Um, and really just talk about mental health, how it's affecting our community, signposting, you know, strategies, what to look out for. You know, and how to try and manage yourself as well, you know, in this current climate that we're in a, of a pandemic. Right. And for those who want to sign up, can you just tell them? Yes. Yeah, so if you want to sign up, it's going to be on Eventbrite from about maybe one, two o'clock, the early hours of Wednesday stroke Thursday morning. Right. Um, it's it's the, tic the tickets fly on Eventbrite. It's all free. Yeah. Um, so Saturday gone, we had 300 people on the platform mm -hmm. and it's probably going to be a crazy number again like that yeah. so the events are really really popular great all right well done thanks thanks for that and sophia to close off the show yeah i think it's been an amazing day today that we're actually talking about health and well-being it's important i think what we can see is that there are services out there there are people doing positive things in the community and we can turn around and have some choices and seek those people out i think it's important for us to understand all those different elements oh, we can't do things physically we can do things I can read and we can avoid the way and of course get your magnesium in. Great. Thank you very much and thank you everyone for attending and good night. See you again soon. We'll be back live again 6:30 tomorrow. How can I get in touch with Sophia? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm easy to find. If you put Morgan Genius, so it's okay. Morgan and Genius, like Genius, but without the I, Genius, yeah. and you'll find me. So on Facebook, yeah. Instagram, and on YouTube. I so YouTube yeah. is I'll, probably I'll, a very good resource. Yes. I'll, I'll, put, uh, I'll put Sophia's number on your WhatsApp. Okay. Yeah, I'll call you about what I want to speak to her about. Okay. All right. <laughs> Great. So good night. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. And I'm really glad care. I got and Take self care. Yeah. And I've got my ticket, I think, for Wednesday already. Great. All yeah, right. So. See you tomorrow. Love yourself, everybody. Thank you. See you thank tomorrow. you. Bye bye. Wonderful. Bye. bye. bye.